Hello, this is Chris Kobe uh, with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching the Video Voters Guide. The League, in conjunction with Metro East Community Media, are here to talk with candidates running for the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Jeff Reardon, running for State Representative, District 48, which generally covers much of Southeast Portland in the adjacent portion of Clackamas County. Welcome, Jeff. Hi, good morning, Chris. I'm so glad to be here this morning. And I actually am the state representative for District 48. Um, I originally came from Kelso, Washington. I'm a Vietnam veteran, uh, spent three years on a nuclear submarine, uh, so I know how to get along with people. Um, combination of experience, I've uh, taught high school for 16 years, I uh, worked for a high-tech company for 21 years. Uh, my wife and I have four daughters, they're all uh, employed. And uh, uh, the reason I'm running for office is, uh, again, uh, I'm running for my fifth term, is I uh, had two main interests. I'm very concerned about higher education and uh, it, with in terms of uh, student access and affordability. And I've also been uh, very concerned about water and ensuring that for uh, generations to come that we have ample water, it is clean water, and um, those are the main two reasons that I'm, that I'm running. So. Thank you very much for sharing that with us, Jeff. Uh, what challenges have been and will be created by the pandemic to the effective and efficient administration of Oregon state government? Mm -hmm. And how do you propose to meet those challenges? Well, I think, Chris, that we're starting to really understand how fragile our, our, a lot of our systems have been already. I mean, we've had uh, people that have been going hungry, relying on food banks. We have, uh, especially uh, our children, a lot of them going to school without food. We know we have way too many people living on the streets. We have people that can't afford homes. Um, we've, they, um, our family, um, uh, I'm sorry, childcare systems have been uh, way too expensive for working families. So we have that and any number of other things, uh, not even getting into the environmental issues, uh, all of these things that have been a challenge in really good times. And so all of this uh, pressure of uh, all of a sudden we're going to have a low uh, income, uh, so many people being put out of work, so many people needing health care, uh, so many people that already lived one paycheck away from being on the streets, and this just this just makes it all all worse. So, um, I'm uh, you know a, as a legislator right now we're I wouldn't want to say a holding pattern, but we are kind of waiting. Uh, now I'm talking to you on mid-April, and uh, we are kind of waiting to see what the federal response is. Uh, we have the uh, working with the governor's office on a series of uh, actions that she's able to take right now. But as a legislator, then I am anxiously awaiting to get back into a special session so that we can identify where are the gaps that uh, need to be filled, where do we need legislative action. Um, and uh, so that's the short term view of it. A little bit longer term, I'm I'm thinking when we do get back into regular session that um, I may need to uh, change the committee assignments I'm asked uh, to be on. I think that our entire uh, budget is going to have to be under review. We're gonna to have to be prioritizing. So uh, I've already been looking at getting on the full ways and means committee, for example, where we really look at every program in the state and have to make, make some really tough calls. So. I think for somebody with uh, my experience in education, in business, having been in the legislature for eight years, uh, and I've been on, I'm actually co-chair of the Natural Resources Ways and Means, so I understand the budgeting process. And uh, I think that's, that's how I could be of the greatest assistance as we face um, challenges that we've never seen before. So. All right. Um, Turning to another issue, traditionally the legislature has conducted the decennial redistricting process, which will occur next year. Are you comfortable with the current redistricting process? If not, how would you seek to change it? That's really a great question. And 
you know, especially in times like now where, where things are so polarized as I like to think more polarized at the national level, but we saw that polarization uh, being unable to complete our recent short session. So I think any system that favors one party or another, when you're looking at the redistricting is a bad system. So I would love to uh, see that change. Um, I don't have a specific recommendation, but in something that is a bipartisan uh, commission that really looks at what's, what's going to help us hear the voices of all the voters. So I think that could be done um, and uh, should be done. On another issue, what are your thoughts on cap and trade proposals intended to mitigate climate change? Are they a good idea or not and why? Well, Chris, this is a uh, cap and trade. It's, it's really uh, been near and dear to my heart. I was on the Energy Environment Committee for the first two terms of office. Um, I've continued to be involved in natural resources and can have a lot of concerns about our environment. Uh, so I am a, a supporter of anything that would help us reduce our emissions and our greenhouse gases. Um, I have to tell you, I was really disappointed that uh, Senate Bill 1530 did not pass. We had, it, it was a reason for our short session uh, failing, uh, failing to be completed. And um, the reason I'm disappointed is I think it became uh, more of a political football rather than a serious conversation about what the issues are because it addressed every issue that had come up in my point of view uh, it should have passed. It would have gotten more money for transportation to um, to the communities across the state. And there were two things in there that we really knew, need to do, which is address uh, forestry. Our forests need to be uh, cleaned up to reduce threats of fire. Uh, there would have been uh, money for that because of 1530. And also a lot of water projects. I mentioned my interest in water. So how do we pay for work that needs to be done in the forest, how do we improve our water systems? Uh, Senate Bill 1530 would have helped pay for that. Uh, and the fact that this bill, it already addressed uh, things that uh, some of the, um, uh, like the energy suppliers had already been doing, uh, their uh, low carbon fuels, all of those things, those were already given credit uh, where credit was due. And um, we also had the regional a reduction in um, uh, gas, not a reduction in gas prices, but uh, acknowledging the regional differences for fuel prices so that we weren't adversely affecting our rural communities. All of those things made it a really good, robust package. It should have passed, uh, but like I said, it became a political symbol of rural versus urban. and. I, I, we've just got to get by that. We have to become and get back to a state where we hear all voices, all voices listen to each other. And um, uh, we need to be able to address this issue of climate change and the other issues that are before us right now. And we've got to do that together as a state. Thank you, Jeff, for your participation. This has been the Video Voter's Guide. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and the ballot measure and exercise your right to vote. Thank you for watching.